Nawalt, the blame game, and various other deflections. There seems to be a fundamental problem, uh, both with men and women. Um, and I think the problem here is the nature of blame, that uh, the man is all too willing to accept responsibility for what he does, even when the fault is simply not there. And I think this arises, as Barbarossa has said many times, from the fact that we are conditioned and taught and uh, perhaps indeed biologically ingrained to believe so, that, uh, that we as men uh, have no value and that uh, it is our responsibility to assume responsibility regardless of what happens. Um, and so that, that, that is, this is extremely prevalent. And I wanted to cite a few examples. And I'll start off by uh, mentioning a bit of a story about my last uh, relationship, the last time I ever decided to participate in the so-called game. And uh, something I've forsworn, but yes, as it were, I, I mean, it took a while for me to wake up to things. And uh, I remember a while back talking to a, a fairly good friend of mine. He's a good guy, but uh, I think he needs to become aware of certain things. And I'm talking about the fact that my last ex cheated on me. Of course, all, they all cheated on me. And I'll get to that in a second. But the interesting thing is that he claimed that at the beginning of my relationship, I discussed with my previous ex that previous uh, girlfriends had cheated on me because I thought it was an important issue to discuss and to bring it to her attention. He claimed that I, in fact, had steered her in the direction, these are this friend of mine, uh, somehow, in some vague manner, had steered her in the direction of uh, being uh, unfaithful and cheating on me by dint of the fact that I had, in the beginning, mentioned to her that uh, these things had happened to me previously. And you see a pattern here. Um, it's very vague, but somehow it is my fault. Indeed, um, it is my fault because I'm the man. Now, this same friend of mine, many years ago, I remember him when he was younger and even unwiser, lamenting uh, the, the destruction of a relationship and, of course, uh, looking for the blame. And where did he look? He looked towards himself. Um, women don't really look to themselves for the blame. They don't think what they've done, uh, they don't think about what they've done wrong in a relationship, usually. So th this is a recurrent phenomenon, and I just want to bring that first example up to say, you know, even as a guy, even your male friends, it's, it's, it's an instinct. What did you do wrong? You know? So the fact that I had talked originally about the initial stages of my, my previous relationship, that things, you know, it's important to me that fidelity is important to me didn't really matter because uh, that very talk was the cause allegedly of her cheating on me which personally I think is bollocks but that's neither here nor there um, but it, it shows a recurrent pattern that the, the, of, of male blame that we, we, we not, not only do women blame us for virtually every flaw and fault in the world Particularly within the so-called relationship, the so-called romantic relationship, we receive the blame as well. How many times have you heard, um, as a male, that you need to try harder, you need to make more of an effort? The female, of course, is told you know, she needs to do what's best for herself. This is very common. And uh, it, it really never ends. And I'm going to cite a few more examples. Um, I had have had a, a female acquaintance. You know, I, it's unavoidable. You have to deal with women on some level. And I talked about uh, relationships and, and women with her. And um, I don't think she's a feminist by any means, uh, at least not officially. But women do love to cling to their privilege, don't they? Um, so in my younger, more ignorant years, I went through the rituals. I bought excess dinners and what have you and gifts. You know, I fully concede my ignorance. And uh, the, those were mistakes, and I am to blame for not waking up sooner. And um, and when I talk about that, though, as a general principle, this sense of entitlement that women have, the sense that 
they deserve something because they are, in fact, women. Uh, she says, with this particular example of a female, says to me, well, it's really funny because you went along with all of it and what have you. And I suppose that to some extent that's true. And then I, uh, then she might say something to the effect of, if I say, well, okay, oh, sorry, if I say this to the her, and I have done, um, if indeed uh, I went along with it, there might have been a reason because, you know, if I didn't go along with it, I wouldn't have gotten the so-called coveted sex. Um, there are a lot of things that I would have had fights and arguments. So then comes the next deflection. And I want to talk about deflection, of course, because this is what it is. That, so why are you together with her to begin with? Why are you together with these women? It, it, with women, talking specifically to women about these things, it's, it's a never-ending series of deflections. It's, you know, first... Um, you went along with it, you explained to, to a larger measure why, you know, A, the sex, but also just to avoid argument and, 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 and whinging and dealing with the, the nastiness that women can display as a result of not getting what they quote-unquote deserve. And um, then then the next deflection, of course, well, why were you together? So and that is essentially also what Nawalt is about, of course, that Nawalt is a massive deflection, and all these deflections have something in common of course, is that they, they lack expletive power. They don't explain anything. They, that is what a deflection is. It is a turning away. And it's a big problem because uh, I've come to the firm and fortunate conclusion that um, with very few examples, I can think of a few on YouTube, you will never get a woman, feminist or otherwise, to concede that a woman, indeed, should take responsibility for herself, that a woman can commit ill, particularly within the sphere of so-called relationships, that is not going to happen. I've had enough experience, enough discussions, it simply doesn't happen. Somehow, somewhere, the man is to blame. And sadly, as I had to cite this example of my friend, that uh, somehow, even as a man, you think, I certainly don't anymore, but he thinks that as a man, it's his fault, or in my case, it's my fault, as in I allegedly drove my ex to cheat on me. Or, of your more deflections, if all of your exes cheated on you, what is the common denominator? Well, of course, the common denominator is me, and because of that, it's my, my fault, of course. I'm the reason why they cheated, who knows why. Well, um, if, I, if, I, if I say, well, what about their own... Uh, character and blah 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 then the next deflection might, might come and I've heard this is not all women are like that or you need to be more careful about the women you select or the women you choose to be with it's always my fault or it's always the man's fault now I thought of a metaphor and analogy for Nawalt and for this whole ludicrous nonsense about you need to be more careful you need to uh, be more circumspect, and no doubt, I mean, in general, in life, you need to be circumspect. But somehow, that it, ultimately, the blame uh, lies on my shoulders, and indeed on all of my fellow men's shoulders. Well, the analogy I like to think of is when someone says Nawalt, and if, if you think this is good, feel free to use this one. Um, if, if one were to perceive, if the heterosexual man were to perceive a, a woman as a, a extremely nutritious and I mean, I'm not saying this is necessarily true, but let's say this is our perception of what woman is based on our biological instinct. Nutritious fruit, or berry, sort of berry, with an incredible amount of nutrients, vitamins, a great amino acid profile, and you know, everything you could possibly want in a form of sustenance. And it's, it's, uh, it is, to begin with, a rare berry, so it's very difficult to find. And this berry... Um, it's not only difficult to find, but it only grows uh, underneath nettle plants. Now, for those of you who might not know what a nettle uh, nettle is, or nettles are these plants with these sort of razor sharp th thorns and leaves. So you have a field. Essentially, uh, the analogy I'm trying to make is you have this field with uh, these berries, and everywhere you want to look, it's covered uh, in nettles, and uh, inevitably you're probably going to cut yourself. What's more, beyond the nettles, the issue, 99% uh, of the berry, uh, sorry, 
most of these berries are not only rare, but there is a there 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 is a, a species of berries that's nearly identical in appearance to it, and it's highly poisonous and toxic. And in any given field, I'll be generous. 99% of those berries will be the uh, imitation berry, the toxic one. And you might have 1% of the highly nutritious, highly sought after berry that will provide all the nutrients for your sustenance buried underneath uh, a never ending series of nettles. Well, that's pretty much what the odds are with regards to women, if I'm being generous. And so that is what the blame game deflection comes down to is that uh, Instead of realizing that the field is covered in, in rather dangerous and abrasive nettles and that um, this imitation species berry is uh, everywhere you look, and th what, are, what are statistically the chances if 99%, not only do you, do you need to go through the nettles because they're 100%, they're everywhere, that 99% of the, the berries that you're looking for are imitation. Is it, is it statistically probable that you're going to find um, the highly sought after berry that will give you all the nutrients and um, sustain you? Uh, no, probably not. In fact, very, very unlikely if you just look at it statistically. And yet, we hear all the time, it is your fault. Uh, you need to be more selective. You need to be more careful, more circumspect. And it, it, it really is, particularly when talking to women, although you hear it unfortunately from men as well, a never-ending series of deflections. And Nawalt is simply just one of them. Um, but uh, they all have one thing in common. Um, well, they have several things in common. They're vacuous, that is, they lack real content, and they explain nothing. If you ask a woman, for example, why... I've actually driven a woman to the point where I say, well, um, these days I have to say I'm not too inclined to even bother talking about these things with women, but in the past I have done. If you actually ask a woman, let's take for granted that your so-called explanation, not all women are like that, is accurate. Why are some women like that then? And I say some with, well, to sort of, to 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 some extent to smooth things over to the extent where I can actually have a discussion, which is almost impossible anyway. The explanation I got a few times I mentioned is that because you're because you're you, that is the man, is looking for that looking for that type of woman. So it it is ultimately your fault. There is never, and I repeat, never an examination of why the women themselves are behaving this way. Are there societal forces at work? Are there biological forces at work? Are there sociological forces at work? All converging on one point to create uh, what one could only describe as a monstrosity. Of course not. You're the guy. You're the man. It's your fault. Um, and so I have to think and say that perhaps Barbarossa is entirely right on this, that, well, maybe it's just, you can't even... Maybe it's not even worth talking to women about this. I'm not even talking about feminists. I'm just talking about your average woman who refuses to acknowledge her privilege, who doesn't want to have a rational discussion. Well, since when do women, most women, they're, they're sorry, there is girl rights, rights what, but as they say in German, uh, <laughs> exceptions confirm the rule. And she's certainly very articulate, and I have great respect for her, but how many women are like that? Not too many. Uh, very few, indeed. So... It is this never-ending series of deflections, um, and it's impossible to make any headway with that. Um, so it just doesn't matter what you say. This is a conclusion I have come to, that it simply does not matter what you say. If you want to have a rational discussion and, and talk about details about anything, um, <clears throat> if, if my ex-girlfriend cheats on me, it's somehow my fault. Never mind the fact that, you know, I went through the rituals and tried to, quote, quote unquote, please her. It's still my fault. Um, whether it be me discussing this issue in the beginning of the previous relationship or what have you, that's my fault. Um, if my ex, if one of my exes turned out to be violent in the distant past, which she did, and she was very violent to some, on occasion, that's my fault as well. Um, 
Now let's reverse this just briefly. Uh, if, uh, if, if, we're, if we're talking about a woman, I highly doubt that she will be told either by her girlfriends or even by men that it's her fault. No, it's then you go to the general, so-called generalization. Then, which the generalizations which aren't very attestable in actual reality, but never mind that. Um, men are men are pigs. Men are this. Men are violent. Uh, he didn't respect you enough. Okay, how often have you heard that? Uh, he doesn't. He didn't respect you enough because he didn't want to buy you X, Y, Z uh, jewelry, or take you out to a fancy dinner. Um. So, you you see where this is going, and and it it is it. In the world, it's all the same. And as I said, all these deflections, all these deflections have two things in common. They're vacuous, they totally lack content, and they explain nothing. And it's important to be aware of that. And I would encourage my fellow men, I know henceforth I will not engage in, in debate anymore with women on this issue or these issues. Um, explaining that uh, relationship dynamics or the intersex dynamics, because the, it, it always results in a kind of either nawalt or some other form of deflection. Um, women are not interested in explanation. They're also not particularly interested in how things work for the most part. So this is, I think, an extension of that. They don't want to understand why things are the way they are or how things are the way they are. And so they uh, employ these deflections. And um, <clears throat> on a final note, or a semi-final note, let me repeat the metaphor of the, the analogy. A massive field of nettles that you have to wade through, you're going to get cut, and there is that imitation sp species berry, 99% of which looks identical to the actual nutritious, the nutrici nutritious berry. Well, you tell me, what are the chances that you're going to, despite all your keen circumspection and, and, and care and, and caution and your ability to select it, what are your chances statistically it, you're almost inevitably going to fail and uh, I think the blame game you know it needs to end and one way of ending the blame game is to just not engage in the discussion at all um, I'm all for self-examination I think it's very important, but uh, when it comes to this issue, self-examination isn't going to do a whole lot because it, it you're looking for something that's just not there. Most men I know are very good guys. They've done, they've tried to be concerned, say, concerned, caring boyfriends. We know how that turns out. So the self-examination is not going to help. Uh, you can examine yourself for other issues. Uh, Maybe you want to increase your daily productivity, X activity. Okay, be be self-examining. But you know, if you if you've had bad luck with women, um, I would suggest. I mean, and that's inevitable, right? <laughs> that that is that is the default status. Stop uh, stop listening to particularly women, but even other men who are pointing the finger in your direction. That it's always your fault. That it's it's your fault for choosing the person, it's your fault for discussing certain topics, that it's your fault for not respecting her enough, for the list is endless. Um, it's always your fault, no matter what you do. And when you have a position like that, or someone else maintains that position, I assure you, you cannot win. Remember, the walls, all of it, deflections. Devoid of content, wholly devoid of content, and wholly lacking in any explicative power whatsoever. It's time to renounce discussions of this sort. It's time to just stop, full stop, don't bother, don't talk about it. It's a waste of your time, it's a waste of my time, it's a waste of men's time, and uh, we should just renounce it, and that's it. Thanks for listening.